When the current generation of Toyota Hilux launched in Australia back in 2017, the ute market was a much more simple place. Ford hadn't yet launched its bi-turbo four-cylinder, the Nissan Navara was still suffering rear suspension problems, and the Volkswagen Amarok didn't even have its V6 yet. Of course, the whole ute world has now massively changed around the Hilux. The new Ranger is setting benchmarks, a new Amarok is going to be based on that Ranger, Nissan fixed the Navara's suspension and came out with an awesome Warrior product, and Toyota was left with its durable, tried and tested, but certainly not innovative Hilux, and they need to do something about all that competition. Hence the 2023 Hilux Rogue, which gets very substantial changes for a running product. For instance, the track is 140 millimeters wider. That is a massive track change to apply to one generation of a vehicle before the new model even arrives. You can tell the Hilux Rogue is much wider because it now has these boxy over fender flares in cladding, which makes the whole thing look like a more serious ute. But is it backed up under the skin? Is it better to drive off-road and on? That's what we're gonna be finding out about the Hilux Rogue in today's video, when we'll check out the interior, have a look at the tub, which is still carpeted, and then we'll jump behind the wheel of this 2.8 liter turbo diesel Hilux to see how it drives. Before we get started, hit subscribe and the notification bell. While the 2023 Rogue is undoubtedly better looking outside, considerably so in fact, it's another year of the same old Hilux interior. It's really getting dated in here now, particularly with the release of the T6.2 Ford Ranger and the forthcoming Volkswagen Amarok, which have much more car-like and resolved interiors. That being said, you do get all of the basics here in the Hilux, including a usable eight inch touchscreen down here with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And you even get a JBL stereo in the Rogue. However, semiconductors are running short and you might be able to get your hands on one sooner if you take a downgrade to an unbranded six speaker system for a modest discount from Toyota. Now the Rogue is kind of the posh Hilux, so we are sitting on perforated black leather seats here with single stage heating for both of these front seats. And we've got electric adjustment as well, so it's actually quite convenient. The steering wheel is leather, but very durable grade leather. We've got shortcut keys here for the small trip computer in between two analog gauges in front of us. No digital display like you'd find on the Ford, for instance. Now we know that Toyota's got one more trick up its sleeve before this generation of Hilux is retired in a couple of years time. We think there's gonna be a super Hilux variant, a new Rugged X, which is even more tough outside, even higher riding than this boosted Rogue, but the interior is likely to remain pretty similar to what we see here until Toyota comes out with an all new generation of Hilux later. But in terms of basic ergonomics, in terms of basic comfort, honestly, it's fine. Toyota have built these cars to do big Ks. All the controls are easy to find and use. The seat's reasonably supportive. So there's actually not all that much to complain about other than superficial stuff. One area where the Hilux really excels is in the back seat, and that's because the seat base has been designed thoughtfully to support your legs back here better than in many other dual cab utes. And even the backrest angle isn't too aggressive. So people sitting back here will find themselves much more comfortable than they might expect. For myself at six foot behind my own driving position, I've got good leg room. The seat's sculpted out to make it so. Headroom is fine, I've got another inch or two, and toe room's okay as well. You've got air vents back here, each of the front seats has a load bearing hook on it so you can stick a bag or something back there. And we even have an armrest, downright luxurious in this kind of segment. Just one small thing, and it is a small thing. The Hilux has always had this poxy headliner which is like fingers on a chalkboard to me. And hopefully the next one has a more car-like lining for the roof. Before we go into the tray, I think it's worth saying that the oxide bronze color on this Hilux Rogue is really lovely. It shifts depending on where the light falls in it. In fact, the whole ute is quite a bit better looking thanks to that increased track. It looks beefier, it looks tougher, and nice color, Toyota. Now, unlike some rivals, including the 2023 D-Max, the Hilux doesn't have a damped tailgate. So if you let that fall, it's gonna really slam hard. But you can start to see one of the Hilux Rogue's unusual features, and that's the uh, marine grade carpeting of the tray. We also have an electric tonneau cover here, doesn't sound healthy this one even though the car's only a thousand k's old it kind of sounds like the tracks are a bit goopy 
But once that's rolled all the way back, you can see this carpeted tray. You can pull that up if you want, and then it's just the bare metal underneath. But it covers the whole thing. It's also got LED light strips, so you can see we've got a power outlet, which is nice and protected behind a cover over there. And if you do take this stuff off, in fact, you don't even need to take it off because your tie down points are pushed through the carpet here. So this won't be to everyone's tastes, and I wouldn't want it to get really wet, even though it is marine grade, but it's kind of an unusual feature of the Hilux Rogue. When it comes to running a Hilux, Toyota trades heavily on its dependability image. It calls this vehicle unbreakable. By now, the DPF issues that have plagued the 2.8 litre engine earlier in its life are well known, and Toyota says that it's fixed. But under the bonnet is still that long running 2.8 litre single turbo diesel engine now many years into its life. However, a lot of people still preferred the old 3 litre. In terms of fuel consumption from that 2.8 litre diesel engine, Toyota claims high single figures, but in our testing, we settled around 11 litres per 100 k's, which gives you a driving range of about 720 kilometres from this vehicle's tank. Servicing is still required at inconveniently short intervals, every six months or 10,000 kilometres and Toyota caps the price of the first six of those services, but use like the Ford Ranger, which have longer annual intervals, end up being cheaper to service over five years. The warranty on the Hilux is five years with unlimited kilometers, and when it comes to insurance, over the last 12 months, the median budget direct customer spent $1,162 to comprehensively insure a new Toyota Hilux. Everybody's situation varies, and your premium will vary based on things insurers take into account, like where you live, how you garage the car, and your driving history. Despite all these changes to the aesthetics and the mechanicals of the Rogue, interestingly, the price hasn't changed. Can't remember the last time I heard that in the year 2022, but I mean, that's kind of generous of Toyota. But as I foreshadowed at the start, this isn't just some kind of sticker pack or some aftermarket box fenders that have been chucked on the Hilux from the local Repco or something. There's actual deep mechanical changes that have happened to this spec of Hilux. The 140 mil track increase is a pretty significant alteration to make to any vehicle. And all of the accompanying suspension changes have been made as well. So the dampers at the front and the rear have been repositioned. The angles at the front have changed and the angles and the lateral position of the dampers at the rear of the ute are different. There's also been changes to the position, angle, and hollowness of the suspension arms. And for the first time ever on a Toyota Hilux, there's actually a rear stabilizer bar as well, which helps with the on-road handling. But light, moderate, even some difficult off-road tracks remain the bread and butter of why people purchase proper four-wheel drive dual cabs with low range four x four. And you know, we have some relatively junior burger obstacles at the test track that we use, enough to chuck you around and start challenging bits and bobs of the four wheel drive system of the Hilux. And as we know about this model, it basically just performs. It doesn't have all of the kind of dedicated modes and settings driven through a touchscreen that newer utes like the Toyota Ranger have, but it's just very capable in an analog sense once you put it into low range four wheel drive at copying significant obstacles. You also do have an element of on the fly switching between two high, i.e. rear wheel drive, and four high, but unlike the Mitsubishi Triton, New Ranger V6, or the Amarok, you can't drive the Hilux in four high on the road, and it doesn't have a four auto mode, which is one of the signs in which it's becoming a bit dated. When you're on blacktop, it's rear wheel drive, and that means that in the rain, it can be pretty sketchy from the rear end at times. We will come back to the chassis of the Hilux in a moment. First of all, let's remind ourselves of what's under the bonnet, because it hasn't changed in a while. It's a 2.8 litre single turbo diesel four cylinder engine. A couple of years ago, it did get a nice power and torque bump, and it continues at 150 kilowatts of power and 500 newton meters of torque. There was also a pretty thorough gearbox retune at the time, and the six-speed automatic, which is fitted as standard to the Rogue variant, is actually half decent these days. It wasn't when this generation launched. The logic in the system could have been improved, and Toyota did improve it. And on some Hilux grades, you can still get a six-speed manual that lets you make your own choices about shifting, and that's even better for this ute. The steering remains pretty slow in terms of ratio, 
and you would never call the Hilux car-like to drive, although some buyers don't want that anyway. However, the ride has been fundamentally improved over the lifespan of this generation Hilux. Changes started to be made to the suspension system of the car a few years ago, and that really did improve the vehicle's on-road compliance, but further alterations have obviously been made with the pretty significant widening of the vehicle's track, and also the addition of that stabilizer bar that I was talking about before, have all improved the Hilux's on-road manners by a considerable margin, to the point where it actually doesn't feel all that much like this generation of Hilux when it came out. Vehicles like the new Ranger V6, which you can get for around the same money as the Hilux Rogue, if not in as cool looking a specification as this, remain more rewarding to drivers behind the wheel on the blacktop, but the Hilux is now at least competent. It's also had safety system improvements over the years, including the addition of adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, and the reversing camera is half decent as well. However, you won't find technologies like strong lane centering. But in terms of active safety, a big improvement Toyota made with the introduction of this 2023 Rogue was that it actually swaps out its rear drum brakes for disc brakes, and you get a commensurate improvement in braking performance as a result. So that's a look at the 2023 Toyota Hilux Rogue, a ute the Toyota have clearly decided to put some effort into because making modifications like a significantly wider track and changing a whole bunch of suspension components just for a year-on-year -year change shows that clearly Toyota is being pushed by competition in this segment and there's a need to keep the Hilux with its head above water. So, are all those things enough for you? Will you be considering the Hilux Rogue? Let me know down below in the comments. While you're there, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, and as always, thank you for watching Chasing Cars.